Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. You often come across the term Mendelian disorders. For a lot of disorders, we say that this is a Mendelian disorder. So what exactly is Mendelian disorder? So what we understand is in honor of Gregor Mendel, these disorders have been named Mendelian disorders because these are those genetic disorders which follow Mendelian patterns of inheritance. So by now we all know that what do we mean by following Mendelian pattern of inheritance. So in Mendelian pattern of inheritance, a child receiving a dominant allele from either parent will have the dominant form of the phenotypic trait. Only those who receives the recessive allele from both the parents will have the recessive phenotype. So basically the concept of dominant allele dominating the phenotype of the trait and the recessive allele only coming, in, coming into prominence if it is if both the alleles are recessive. So that is primarily Mendelian pattern of inheritance and those disorders which follow this pattern are all classified as gen uh, Mendelian disorders. So these disorders, they happen due to alteration or mutation in a single gene and the patterns of transmission is along the lines of the principles of inheritance. The way you have seen the Mendel's experiment. Now, even though we would not say that genetic disorders are very common, in fact, they are quite rare because they affect almost one in several thousands. So it, it's definitely not very common. Now, some of the these Mendelian disorders can be classified into the following types autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant and X-linked recessive. So these are the four categories into which Mendelian disorders can be classified. So we will look into each type in more detail. So let's start with autosomal dominant. So, so as the name suggests, it means that if a child inherits the abnormal gene from only one parent, he or she can get the disease. So autosomal, first let's look at it term wise. Autosomal means this disease get inherited through the autosomes. That means the defective gene is present on the autosomes. So sex chromosomes do not play a role here and therefore this type of disorders, they are not dependent on the sex of the person or they are not dependent on the gender. Okay, so they are transmitted through the autosomes. Secondly, dominant. That means even if uh, a person inherits one abnormal gene, even if one allele is there, so that person will get that disease. So that is why it is autosomal dominant. So let, let's say a father is normal and here you have a mother so in autosomal dominant concept, now if the father is normal, now let's say that the gene representing a normal gene and a defective gene are capital R and small r respectively. Let's assume that small r represents the gene which is uh, an abnormal gene which can cause the Mendelian disorder. So if we say that the father is normal, then the, that means the father has the genotype capital R, capital R. Right? So both the uh, alleles are normal alleles. Whereas if I say that the mother is affected, that means the mother has both the alleles affected. That is also a possibility. It is also possible that there is one allele that is which represents normal gene. The other one is capital R. So in this case also the mother is affected. So like in this case, like in case of autosomal recessive, the disease happens only if both the defective genes are present. But in this case, even if one defective allele is there, that person get affected with the disease. So that is the difference between autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. So autosomal dominant means even if one abnormal allele is present, that person will be affected. So there is no concept of carrier. The person will get affected even with one abnormal gene. So that's autosomal dominant. Now let us look at some examples of diseases which have have autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, Huntington's disease, Marfan syndrome, cataract. So which is very much common for all, a lot of you because as people grow old, uh, you often see a, a white colored patch inside the eye because of which their visibility decreases. So that's cataract. Achondroplasia, which is 
uh, a kind of short limbed dwarfism and anonychia which means absence of nails so i think i'll write these here so anonychia is absence of nails and this is also an autosomal dominant pattern this follows autosomal dominant pattern astigmatism so this is an imperfection in the shape of the eye lens or sometimes in the curvature of the cornea because of which the visibility gets impacted polydactyly poly means many dactyly means fingers so when there are extra fingers too many fingers or toes that is polydactyly brachydactyly that is abnormal or short fingers or toes so abnormal short fingers like excessively short fingers or toes is termed as brachydactyly now all of these are examples of disorders which are autosomal dominant that is they get inherited from one generation to the next through the autosomes and also even if one allele is uh, abnormal so even if one abnormal gene is present in that person that is capable of making that person impacted with the disease so we will talk about two of these diseases in more detail that is huntington's disease and marfan syndrome so let's talk about huntington's disease so this is a progressive degenerative brain disorder so since this is a brain disorder so obviously uh, the brain functionalities get impacted it generally manifests in adult life it is not a disease which is present since birth so it manifests itself somewhere around 30 to 50 years of age and generally the life expectancy of the patient is 15 years from the onset of the symptoms so this generally happens mid age or old age so that's huntington's disease now why what's the cause behind this disease why does this disease occur so what happens is there if there there is a defective gene on chromosome number 4 so let's talk it in this way that let's say there is a gene so there exists a gene on chromosome number 4 and that gene ideally the normal gene should have 30, 10 to 34 repeats of cag so if you look at this each section of cag that gets repeated over and again so if it is a normal gene in that case there would be 10 to 34 repeats of the cag pattern but if it is a defective gene in that case there would be 42 to 100 repeats of cag so in case of a defective gene you would have 42 to 100 repeats of cag and in case of uh, a normal gene this should be 10 to 34 repeats so you see when too many cag units get repeated over and again then what is happening your overall uh, information on the dna is getting altered therefore the kind of proteins which are going to get synthesized will also get altered and as a result the overall trait will get altered so this causes degenerative brain disorder now what are the what are some of the common symptoms of this disease abnormal limb movement abnormal speech memory and intelligence affected because basically your brain is getting impacted now brain controls a lot of activities like our body movements they are also controlled by the brain the way we speak what what the content that we speak uh, the way we remember things our intelligence all of these are controlled by the brain and therefore all of these get impacted now let's look at the uh genetics of this huntington's disease how it gets inherited from one generation to the next now let's say that if you have an affected father and an unaffected mother now as i have mentioned that autosomal dominant inheritance that means a person will be unaffected only when any person will be unaffected only when he has this pattern provided capital r represents the normal gene but let's say now see these representations are nothing but our assumptions so let us assume that if we say that in this diagram which have been drawn here here capital r represents the defective gene so this defective gene is dominant in this case so if a person is unaffected that means the per person should not have the defective gene at all so the unaffected person should be small r small r and an affected person 
can have both the genes defective or he can even have one gene defective so in both these cases the person will get affected because this defective gene is the dominant gene and that is the concept of autosomal dominant inheritance pattern so here you see the father is affected so the father has one capital r and smaller the mother is unaffected so smaller smaller so now these are the various possibilities out of which we see that in two possibilities so 50% of the children might be unaffected and 50% of the children might get affected so this is how the huntington's disease get inherited the next is marfan syndrome so this is a syndrome which shows skeletal disproportion now what do we mean by skeletal disproportion so if you look at our body structure you see that the length and breadth of all the body parts are proportionate to each other now in this syndrome what happens is the arm span becomes greater than the height so if you like let's say that so let's say that this is a person so his arm span that is this total length is greater than that of his total height so that means there is a disproportion somewhere right so that disproportion exists in marfan syndrome so here uh, it, it the some of the common symptoms are long feet with long thin fingers arm span greater than height dislocated eye lens so this is basically a connective tissue disorder because connective tissue as we know plays a very critical role in uh, in the body structure like it it is kind of uh, the backbone for the entire body structure that, that we see but the specific gene which is responsible for marfan syndrome is fibrillin 1 so the gene the gene responsible for marfan syndrome is fibrillin 1 and this five this gene is located on chromosome number 15 so if there is a defect in this gene then marfan syndrome occurs now this is again an autosomal dominant inheritance therefore even if a person has one allele with a defective gene so even if one allele is defective the person will have the disease so let us see how it gets passed on to the next generation so this would remain the same as long as two diseases follow the same inheritance pattern the way it gets inherited will remain the same so if the parent has a dominant trait that means parent has the disorder so if you see here because here the dominant trait represents the defective gene that shows that the de gene defective gene is present on this chromosome so the parent has a dominant trait means the parent has disorder if the parent has disorder there is a 50% chance that the child will also have the disorder so if you look at this there is a 50% possibility of a child having a disorder and 50% possibility that the child will not have the disorder but when we talk about autosomal dominant inheritance pattern these type of inheritance is always independent of the gender so whether you talk about huntington's disease or you talk about marfan syndrome they are all independent of the gender the next thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you